Once upon a time, I was a private label seller getting my ass kicked. Now I'm kicking ass with my Made in the USA Amazon FBA brand. Is that cheesy? I feel like that was cheesy. So this is a typical yes. like Amazon FBA private label product. If you use X-Ray on this, and the amount of revenue these sellers do is insane. So 230,000, 65,000, uh, 15,000, you know, they're doing well. They're selling really well. However, you'll notice when you look at the price, you know, the one selling $20,000 a month is selling at you know, $9.99, next best one is $7.99, next best one is $7.99. And then so if we click into one of these listings, I wanna to explain to you some of the inside out approach of how this actually works, right? Uh, we go to profitability calculator and let's take unit manufacturing cost out. Actually, let's leave it in. That's average, what most people probably have. Uh, we'll use that as a standard mark, right? So it's like you have to source a box that's six inches wide or six inches by four inches by two inches. You know in the market, can't really sell it for more than $9.99. Ideally, you're at $7.99. So we can't change our price, I'm saying you're a private label seller. You order 300 of these, so you're paying the most you possibly can for this. Even say you order 1,000, still you're paying in the range of average sourcing cost. Let's say the box, even uncustomized, maybe a generic logo put on there, this product and this product is gonna cost you $3. I think that's reasonable, we could assume that's true. You have a margin of 20%, and you make $2 off of each unit. That means I essentially cannot spend any money to acquire a customer. You know, acquiring a new customer for less than $1.99, even on Amazon, is gonna be difficult, and here's why. Because when you go back to this market, the sellers who do 20,000 units per month, 8,000 units per month, 2,000 units per month at those low prices, are just gonna hold down those top of search impression zones. So they can increase how much they can pay to acquire a customer, and here's why, and it makes it hard for you to rank. So you have a higher price on your product because you couldn't order as many. And then on top of that, you have to pay more to acquire a customer because they've locked down the positions. And because of the fact that they have a social proof of 26,000 ratings or some of the other ones, like 8,000 ratings, they're gonna have a higher conversion rate than you. So their ads are actually gonna perform better. They can pay more for them because they perform better. And the final kicker right here, because of this, they don't have a 20% margin. They probably have a margin that more closely resembles this, 37%. And, and you know, this is, I'm using generic numbers here. I don't know what this actual listings margin is. But the model in general with these big listings that sell massive volume is that they're gonna be able to pay so much less for the unit than you because they have connections in China. They're ordering such high volumes that they can say, you know, our unit cost is gonna be 30 cents a unit, 70 cents a unit, 80 cents a unit. Most people are gonna to have to pay 280, 290, 270, right? Because we're ordering 20,000 of these things at a time, or maybe even more, right? 50,000 units at a time. You can crush that unit cost way down when you do that. And so quite literally in this type of situation, the rich keep getting richer and the poor get poorer when new Amazon sellers try and compete with, you know, sellers sourcing from China like this one, they can pay more to acquire a customer than the beginning sellers, increasing PPC costs for everyone else. And they can do so because they have high social proof, meaning better conversion rates and the lowest possible sourcing cost for the product. So if it's truly a race to the bottom, well, if you can be the one that can still survive at the bottom, AKA lowest cost to you know, deliver that service or goods to the customer, you're still gonna be the one winning. Now you're probably thinking, well, how, how do I win then? This sounds like a zero sum game. Okay, you can either become that person, you can really go to war in a market that hasn't developed yet, that has potential to develop with a inexpensive product that just meets the needs of the customer, does not exceed expectations. Um, there's no connection to the brand, so you're truly just private labeling. However, you fake it until you make it for long enough that you can order so many of these that you can get it for the lowest possible price and be one of those dominating figures that have been selling in a market for five, six years with just a standard private label mark, um, product and still winning. That is not the route that I took to beat that. You can build a brand where the customers wanna buy from you because they feel like you made the product just for them. Now that's the route that I took. I got out of the private label game and into the brand building game where I'm putting all of my time and energy into one brand and growing it to seven figures. In fact, we also only have one product. We could launch more products right now. It's not that we can't, but we're just pouring all of our energy into getting one brand with one product 
as maximized as possible in efficiency, profitability, etc. So for instance, in a market like MCT oil, we have a company that a lot of you may have heard of, like Bulletproof. Now Bulletproof is famous for making their Bulletproof coffee. I think that was their keystone, of, you know, original launch product. However, they've now come to dominate markets like MCT oil driving, you know, you can see 8,000 sales this month alone. So we're talking, you know, almost a quarter of a million dollars on uh, coconut oil, <laughs> literally. And so we can see not much is different. This listing has 22,000 ratings. This listing has 26,000 ratings. And the difference lies here. Instead of competing for one of the lowest price oils, like maybe this one at $13.86, um, they're competing to be one of the highest price oils, so $26.95. For instance, you'll notice this one next to it, and you go, well, hey, that one's that expensive too. Yeah, but it's double the amount. So technically, they're actually selling uh, this product, the equivalent product, for $13 or $14 because they're giving away twice as much because they don't have the brand behind them. They're selling 16 ounces at the same price that they're selling 32 ounces. Well, it's pretty simple. Customers that see this logo... Oh, that's just a guy. Customers that see this logo want to buy from this company, right? So they might have heard of it on a podcast. They might have heard their favorite influencer using it. Maybe their friend recommended it to them. They looked up best MCT oil. Maybe they saw a blog article with Bulletproof as one of the top 12 best MCT oils. They went to the reviews of this one to see why it maybe it's a higher price and see that all of the customers are giving it five-star reviews. Now, here's the amazing thing is that if you took the contents of this bottle, took it out of this bottle, poured it into a generic bottle, it would be worth half as much. So it's not that they're buying the features of this one, that it's such an exceptional product. It's just who they're buying it from and that's why they're paying more. Yes, it's really good, right? That That's a given. The product's great. It is meeting and exceeding expectation. However, with brand building, like I said, instead of having the cheapest product, you're fighting to have the highest perceived value in your product not actual highest value. Like I said, the contents are pro probably pretty similar to what else is on Amazon, the highest perceived value. So there's equity in your packaging because that logo's on there, they can charge more. And I know you're probably thinking, yeah, that's great for bulletproof, but I'm not bulletproof. I'm just little old me trying to sell a few small products on Amazon. But hey, I was once there too. It was just last year that I was getting overrun by in every market that I launched by cheaper options that customers wanted to buy more. So I finally said, that's enough. I don't want to compete to be the lowest priced product. I don't want to become a master of sourcing no name products. I want to become a master of branding. And instead of people running to the cheapest option, I want them to be running towards my brand name. And that's not to say you are going to have total control of the market. Okay. Because for every customer that buys from your brand, three more are gonna go buy from the cheaper option. However, it takes you out of that rat race. You no longer are part of the market decline in pricing. So when all of these sellers are competing on the generic ones to keep going down and down and down, you can hold your price or even go up, up and up, right? You can find that point where customers just continually buy your product. My product launched at $24.99, then we went to $29.99. Now we're all the way up to $34.99. We've sold as high as $39.99, and my market average pricing is below $14. That is the power of a brand name. Let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in hearing more about how I built that brand in a market that to most would seem relatively saturated. And if you need help selling on Amazon, you can join my Savage Sellers community below, where there will be new course videos every week, live Q&As with me, where you can ask ask me questions, and so much more. I hope to see you in there. If not, I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks so much. Later.